All right guys, Joe and Ania here at beautiful Logan Martin. And I wanna show you guys, you know, what a day of fishing or really just a half day of fishing looks like and how I'm gonna go out and break down the water. And we're here at Logan Martin at Lincoln Landing. This is a, actually a ramp that I've never been to before, but it's a massive new ramp up here on the upper, kind of upper middle part of Logan Martin. And I'm ready to get out there and just see what's going on. I, I literally have not fished this part of the river in three months. So this is gonna be totally just winging it and trying to figure them out from shallow to offshore stuff and showing it to you guys so you can learn. So that's what it's all about. First thing I'm noticing is that the water's a little low. See the stalks of the grass out there? You can see the brown stalks. Not a bad scenario for being up here in the upper half of the lake. And it's always good to start out in the grass a little bit. Either flipping something or swimming a jig or throwing a frog. Little docks like this. Ooh. Hopefully a buzz bait might be kind of fun. I don't know if I a buzz bait right now. They should. Let's see why they wouldn't. It doesn't take much. Logan Martin grass is not like Lay Lake grass where, or Neely Henry grass or Weiss or whatever where you can find some grass that'll have actual good depth in it. Most of the Logan Martin grass is going to have like a foot and a half max depth in it, but they still get in it, which is kind of crazy. But the water is 80 degrees. I'm going to keep this buzz goat honest today right there. Got the billy goat on the back of a free swinging buzz bait just because I would love to get a top water bite. Oh, grass moved. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. That's how you want to start the morning, folks. I'm trying to make this great YouTube video for you so you can learn how to lasso a bass. Look at that. Completely lassoed. That's, I mean, I didn't make that up. You can't even make that up. You saw it. Lassoed him hard. All right, sorry, bud. Man, he messed up. I saw that grass shake. I said, dude, that's her. So that's a big one. That's what eats the cross size power Phoenix jig. Them dang biggins. <laughs> Knew I was going to catch it in the grass this morning. Lassoed him. I did. That was weird. <laughs> I've never done that before. Grass can be kind of, you know, overwhelming just looking at everything. Everything looks good and everything looks similar, but I'm really picking my targets here. I'm hitting little isolated clumps. Like, see this little point right here? This would be a perfect place to lay one right across the tip of that point and hop it right along that edge. And what happens is these little tips stick out and they break the current just enough or get that water pushing on them. It makes a little bit of a healthier place or something that's got a little deeper water nearby. Those are the targets you normally look for. Doesn't mean they're always gonna be there, but normally if you hit enough of those kind of targets, you're gonna run into something hungry. Look at that ugly duck. Man, you ugly. U-G-L-Y, he ain't got no alibi, he ugly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, Doug, that's not nice. Look, he's sad, he's swimming away. Temple Fork Outfitter, my favorite rod. Yeah, we definitely need to do a rod video. My favorite rod sponsor. We should do a ton of tip videos. There's a little largey on the jig. Actually slightly bigger than the first few. A little better, but not what we're after. But hey, it's a bite. It's weird that I've caught all largemouth this morning. I mean, the grass ones make sense, but Lay down, baby largemouth. I am trying hard to make this flipping bite work, and it's not happening very good, but at least I got a bite. I've, this, that little green bush right there was right in the mouth of a cut. And anytime you're fishing in the riverbank like this, you know, it can look very similar all the way for miles and miles, but when you get a cut mouth, like a little creek mouth that opens up, that's always gonna be one of your higher percentage places, so. That was where the little largemouth was hanging out. Now we just need his big sister. Oh, you little turd. He eat my feet. He did. 
how do you eat elastic feet? Rude. All right, cross size power phoenix jig right there. That little dude catches the heck out of him. I put a little TRD bugs on the back normally, or the baby goat. And the key with elastic is just knowing how to rig it. So I push this in, I'm gonna get it going. And you just gotta do it in one movement and you gotta push from below the point of the hook, just push it on there. And then you stretch it up over the keeper. So I, I put some stretch to it and then cram it up on there. And once it's on there, it's not really going anywhere. Let's see if it works. Let's have some fun this fishing sick. I'm gonna put it on the line. Another one on the jig. He's a little better. Hey, bud. How are you? Look at that. Right in the tip of his snoot holster. See his snoot holster? This is called the mouth. This would be the bottom lip. This would be the snoot holster. And the snoot holster normally holds the hook pretty good. It's a nice large mouth. I will take it. Got my little bruised green pumpkin cross-sized power finesse jig. And I got TRD bugs on it. And then I trimmed down this weed guard. See how I trimmed it right to the tip of the hook? That's a big key to sticking these fish and they bite it with that small, strong hook on there. Caught me a largie up by the bush. Not a bad fish. See ya, buddy. Oh, he's majestic. And the eyes, how much? <laughs> oh no. Oh, I was recording, we're good. <laughs> Tuck the nips, here we go. This makes me look slimmer. <laughs> All right, so. I honestly feel like just these straight riverbank stretches are not the deal. I've had what, four bites now flipping in the river, and every one of them has been either just below or just above a cut mouth. So we're going to run the pattern. We're just going to start hopping up the river and hitting every creek mouth and pocket mouth I can find. And that's the plan. Let's see if it works. All right, so one of the coolest things about these cut mouths, even if the current's not running on the river, these cut mouths will have some flow that goes in and out. Look at right here by the tree. I mean, you can see that current is ripping out of here. So that makes it so even when the water's slack on the river, these are the places that actually have the most oxygen running in. I mean, you can see that current is rushing over. Standing in line to see the show tonight and there's a light on, heavy glow by the way i tried to say i'd be there waiting for there's a nice one that that right there is what i'm after beautiful large mouth look how he got the jig oh yeah right in his snood holster that's what i'm talking about right in the cut mouth too look at this textbook this is the main river this be the creek this be the cut mouth and that'd be a nice, healthy, large mouth. That's a good one, dude. Woo -hoo! That is so cool to, you know, figure out a pattern, whether it's offshore fishing or fishing the bank, but to figure out something, come right up here, first cut mouth we hit, that's a nice one. That fish isn't, probably isn't quite three pounds, but she's a good one. If it had a belly, it'd be a three pounder all day long. Look how pretty it is. It's kind of skinny, but nice, large mouth. See ya, buddy. boat flipped her hard real hard all right so we're gonna adjust to the offshore deal I got a deep diving crankbait and I got a Ned rig that's probably about all I'll need we're gonna be fishing humps and points and rock piles that are out here in the river the Ned rig just catches them but I feel like offshore fishing is just kind of the way to go now like I said we've got that pattern with the cut mouths going and that's fun but just because you have one pattern doesn't mean you can't find a new pattern so that's always one of my goals is to find multiple ways to catch them in a day so we're gonna try it also guys if you're enjoying this video make sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel because I have a ton of great content coming and make sure to leave me comments and stuff too because I want to interact with you guys and I want to be able to you know get your feedback but I also want to be able to help you if you got anything you want to learn or any questions I'm gonna answer all the questions so just comment on it like it subscribe it we'll be rolling Alright guys, so 
this is what you're looking for right here we're out in the middle of the river we got this big bar that sticks out right here you can see it going up and down and I'm gonna stay right on the edge of this bar and throw a Ned rig up onto the rocks and then drag it back and probably catch a bunch of toads guaranteed guaranteed toads there we go oh might be a good one in the current is it a drum? Tell me it's not a drum. It's a spotted dog in the middle of the river. There we go. That's fun. I love that. Switch it up, come out to the river. Not a bad one for real. I'll take him. It's August. It is tough. Matt. Oh man. I must have had him on a rock down there. That is a good healthy spotted bass. So here's my little Ned rig set up. So I, what I do with this is I rig it what I call Texas Ned style. So it's like a little miniature shaky head. Then I can throw it in trees. It doesn't hang as bad. That is a fish catching dude. And that's a pretty spotted bass. Look at how beautiful they are. Totally pretty. You got the tooth patch on the tongue. That's how you can tell they're a spot if you aren't used to looking at them and seeing them and knowing that that's a beautiful Coosa River spot. Look at that current just flushing over my new friend. You splashed your camera. You splashed the camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That right there is exactly what you're looking for offshore. You know, that's a way above average of anything I was catching on the bank. Other than that one that, you know, borderline kicker being a three, probably a three pounder, but feels good. First offshore spot, they caught a nice one. That's what I'm talking about. Now, a lot of the time they'll group up too, so hopefully he's got some Big fat friends just like me, like my sexy pink bubble pliers. I do like your bubble pliers. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys the Texas Ned. My buddy Miles Berghoff, you guys know him. He's the one that actually started doing this and I was kind of skeptical. I didn't think it would hook the fish that good, but it works really, really good. So I'm just gonna take my little finesse TRD and my Ned locks. I'm gonna run it right into the tip, just like you would rig a regular shaky head or a Texas rig. And I just go a little bit on there just so it'll slide up over this keeper. And I'm gonna rotate it just a half turn, push it up on the keeper. So it's stuck on there good. And then just pinch it and bury that thing back in there. Just like I said, like a little mini shaky head. That right there is how I always throw my Ned rigs. Unless I was dragging like really, really like open rock areas or flats or something like that. Or a school of fish where I know there's no, you know, no wood or rocks down there. But that just seems to help the bait bounce through better. And it makes the bait stand up at a little different angle too, kind of at a 45. So we are all set. There's one. Ooh, that one nailed it. That might be a better one there. He's coming up. That one might be a little better. I'm just taking this crankbait and banging it into the rocks. I'm trying to hit him as hard as I can. This is really a good one. Unless he's foul hooked. Oh, don't you pull off, baby. But just banging the rocks. Oh, oh I got two. Oh, I got two. I got a nice double. Oh! Oh! oh no! Pandemonium. Maybe we found them. That's a pretty good sign that we found them. Oh my goodness, I got two. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Oh gosh. Let's be careful here, fish. Look at that. That's a nice double too. That ain't no joke right there. That is why you throw the crankbait. That's so cool. I was planning on catching them on a Ned, but hey, anytime you can double up on chunk spots in August on a plug, it doesn't get much better than that. That is sweet. Look at that poor guy. He's got a coal hole in his bottom lip. Don't use penetrating coal tabs. It'll mess up that guy's feeding, but that was cool. Look at how that first one choked it. Absolutely hammered it. Look, he pulled my, he pulled my split ring. Check that out. I got lucky right there. I guess I got lucky right there. He pulled that back hook off, but I'll take a lucky catch. That was pure chaos. All right, we better let him go quick so they don't die. All right, double release. Look at those, I mean, they're twins. We got twins in the house. It's beautiful Coosa River spots. All right, guys, we switched it up. Caught them shallow, caught them flipping. Came out here in the middle of the river, caught a nice one on a Ned, and then doubled up on a plug with two, like, you know, two and a half pound spots. That is what it's all about. I'm shaking a little, I'm excited. <laughs> that was so fun. 
<laughs> Woo! This is honestly one of those times of day where a lot of people kind of give up on the day. You know, it's hot. It's 12 o'clock. We've been out here for five hours and the fishing has not been easy. But there's also a bite window that happens in the afternoon sometimes and it seems like that bite window is now. I got one on the net. The bite window. Oh, he came off! <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Another one ate it. I kid you not, another one just hammered it. Look at that, dude. They are loaded right here. We are on them now. <laughs> I literally lost one and the other one ate it immediately. They are stacked, baby. Totally stacked. Look at the net in his face. That is so cool. We have figured them out. That's fun. Speed it catching them boy <laughs> no there's more down there we just got to let them get settled back in there we go on the demiki or the ned miki as i like to call it that's a nice one sweet that is so cool found a group of them and now we're just switching baits and continuing to catch good ones look at that nice healthy spot i guess he's healthy i don't know would you call that healthy maybe not but I'll take him, I love him. Look at that, little streaks 375 on the finesse eyes in his face. That right there, I've literally caught fish in every single month of the year on every lake I've ever been to. If they eat shad or small bait fish, they will eat that. Sweet, another one bites the dust. All right, that is how you persevere catch them that was a blast you know sometimes the most rewarding days are honestly the ones that were tough like the ones that were not easy i had to grind through it had to figure them out i haven't been up here in months and caught fish on four different baits doing multiple different patterns from two feet out to 15 feet so you know started out with a little cross size power finesse jig i got it on a 7.3 heavy uh, tfo tactical elite and then i got the bass pro 8.3 to 1 uh, johnny morris platinum with 20 pound vicious pro elite on there that's my jig setup, and then as you guys saw we caught him on a ned rig got my no fade braid on a 7-1 medium light tfo tactical elite to a 10 pound pro elite floral leader a little texas ned and then the the plug that was probably the best switch of the day you know there's always a moment in a day of fishing where you make a decision and it works and that was right there you know what you guys saw catching that double and catching multiple fish on that cloud 9 c10 that six cents crankbait was the switch of the day 100 percent if i didn't make that choice you know it could have been kind of a lost day we had fun caught fish put them in the boat baby that's what i'm talking about so guys if you want more awesome stuff i've got a ton of videos planned and i'm really excited to be sharing it on youtube with you guys so make sure to like the video subscribe to my page and uh, we'll be back out here on the water soon to get you more great content.